Maybe before we begin tonight, you kiss the lucky cat. I don't really want to kiss the lucky cat. Why don't you kiss it? No, I'm not kissing it. It's an alley cat. Maybe we call it the unlucky cat, and then if we don't kiss it, we get good luck. Yeah, OK, so... Mm, not kissing, not mm. kissing. Yeah, that feels really good. Great, yeah. I feel really lucky. It's great. Tonight on Hamish and Andy's Gap Year Asia. Dragon headquarters, go. There's a dragon on the loose in Bangkok. Stand back, everyone. <laughs> wow, it's a big one. They meet a Shaolin monk who runs on water. <laughs> he has monked that out of a park. And the boys go head to head for 250 laps in the roundabout JP. And it's green. Go, go, go. How's the traffic? Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Gap Year Asia. Huge show for you tonight. I think our biggest yet, Hen. Well, and that may well be true, but before you begin, if you'll permit me, I'd just like to read a little bit of a letter here mm -hmm. from a young girl that's written in called Alex. OK, that's nice. Yeah, it's go. really nice. Mm. Hi, guys. I'm loving your show. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Uh, I noticed Andy needs a new watch. Yeah, he does. It would make me so happy if he bought one from Hamish. I know Hamish okay. has one that he recently got that he's yeah, willing to sell I'm to not Andy. Buying, I'm not buying the watch, OK? Well, no, she, this is from Alex. She says, Hamish has just got it from the market. He will give you sure, best you've, you've price. You've been trying to sell me this fake Rolex for the whole week. No, so she far. says, there it is there. Yeah, I She can says, see it. it's not fake, it's a genuine watch. Feel the weight, she says. OK, I Feel think, the weight. Yeah, sure. I think Feel the weight of that. more important to get on with the show. Nothing's more important, I think, than making a child happy, which is why I'm going to take a further 100 baht off the price no, tonight, Andy. No, Feel that weight. What about, what about the importance of protecting a whole city from fear? Dragons. Oh, that's true, we did do that this week. Mm. We it's did on par. <laughs> we did that in Bangkok this week. Uh, people might know, but there is an infestation of large monitor lizards. They grow up to three metres long in this city. We caught up with some guys that have a hard time trying to catch them when they get in people's homes. Tell you what, speaking of time, mm. two settings. I'm not doing the watch, okay? Two right? settings yeah, this is on how, that. This is how London, it went. Paris. We flew to nowhere, actually. This was in Thailand. That's right, yeah. Everyone on the flight was so annoyed that we turned the plane around. And in Bangkok, we drove to the headquarters of the dragon catching team and met the head guy. Now, uh, forgive us for being a little underprepared, but is it dragons or lizards? It's lizard. lizards. Lizards. But it looks like a dragon, you know, it's huge. How big? Around 100 kilos. 100 kilos? That's right. That's bloody big. Jeez, these were big dragons. Well, lizard. Well, lizard dragons. No wonder they needed a large call centre with staff constantly taking distress calls from people that have giant lizard dragon problems. So, how many calls do you get a day? He said around 60 to 100 calls a day. How many dragons are there in Bangkok? He said quite a lot, but average, we catch them here, four to five dragons, lizards a day. Do they kill people? Normally, they wouldn't attack human beings. Right. Unless they are under stress. Yeah. Then, then they may start to defend themselves. And they could do some damage? They could do some what damage. What parts do damage? Is it teeth or is it the claws? Oh, you use the mouth, you know, the teeth bite you and the tails, you know, whack at you. The whip? Yeah. The whip tail. Rightio. So remember, if you're ever in Bangkok being held hostage by a dragon... Lizard! ..call this number. One, six... Seven, seven. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> Dragon headquarters, go. Uh, yes, yes, I think I've got... Shut up, where are you? We need to know where you are. Well, I'm, I'm about three metres to your left. That's actually out of my zone. <laughs> the number works, though. They have dozens of people in the call centre, but also a control room to direct the dragon lizard catching squad. Did someone just call in a dragon? Yes, yes. Well, can we go? Can we go? Oh, yeah, we're going to go. Well, do we? I mean, let's just... Go. Guys, we're going to get the dragon. Wow, I don't know what to do. Dragon. No, you stay here. Ah, there's too many things to do. Do we... What should we get? Get the vest. We're getting a vest. Get a vest, OK? Everyone stand back, we're getting vests. We were issued with vests and catching rods. Let me just hold that for you. Oh, OK, but okay. quickly give it back. OK. Do we go down a pole? No, we're on the ground level. Should we go upstairs and go down a pole? No time to spare. Do we need a gun at all? Oh, it's just a walkie-talkie. 
No, in all seriousness, show a bit of hustle. It's a dragon call. Oh, stop, stop. I got a lesson outside as to how to go about catching them. OK, OK, good. I practised on my own. There you go. You get back to work and I'll get back to my work too. We're going to go get a dragon. Bye-bye. But after all that great hustle, it did turn out the car was parked about 20 minutes away. No. Nah. No. We used the time to get Ham up to speed on how to catch the dragon lizards. I already knew. <laughs> You're f***ed, mate. <laughs> but in the excitement, I got my catching wire stuck in the shaft of the catching stick. Always use teeth if you can. Little scout trick. They have bacteria. Ham <laughs> didn't think about the lizard bacteria on their teeth that kills people. And uh, he went and licked the blue cord. Thank you, keep the change. Oh, it's like a bag of, <laughs> a bag of coke. <laughs> How come you've got a bag of coke? To wash the dragon bacteria out of my face. What is the bacteria on their teeth? Is that the dangerous part for the humans? Yes, it's the yeah. dangerous part. If you have been bitten by the lizard, then you have to be sent to hospital straight away to vaccinate it straight away. Vaccinate straight away? Yep. So do you reckon it's a good thing or is it a bad thing to lick the rope, the catching rope? <laughs> no, no. Here we go. Roll up. Roll up, we're on. Yes. We were on with unofficial lights and sirens. Dragon cups roll out. All right, we're ready. OK, let's do this. Let's find this dragon. Oh, we found it. And it was massive. We worked out that for one this size, it required three people to catch it. Head, tail, neck. Let's do this. Ready? Head, tail, neck. Go. Go. Let's go. Let's catch a dragon. How big do I need this loop? Oh, it's big. Oh, mate, Ando, it's huge. Remember, I'll just get the head. You stay real cool. Oh, jeez. Oh, there he is. Right, stay back, he's got teeth. He's, he's coming out the end. He's, he's, he's coming out the end. He's running, he's what? running, he's running. You're under arrest! Stand back, everyone. <laughs> stand back. Stand, stand back. forward. Give him space. It was at least 80 kilos <laughs> and it just smashed a pop plant. So that's malicious trespass and criminal damage. You're gonna, you pay for that? You're going to pay for that? Slowly, 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 slowly. He's running, he's running, he's running. There he is. <laughs> what are we doing? We're watching and observing a dragon. This is one of the most complicated dragon takedowns you're ever going to see. Get it out in the open first. Nah, snag him. I've got the shot. Slowly, 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 slowly. Taking Good. the shot. I've got the shot. I've got him. Get in there and grab that dragon's tail, Andy. Do you want to arrest him out here? We'd done it. We'd apprehended the criminal. She, the guy with the old loop. Blue loop pole was pretty fast. Drag cops, drag cops. That's not cops dressed as women. That's cops who catch dragons. Drag cops, drag cops. <laughs> what a rush. A job well done. And to finish things, we took the 80 kilo beast and placed him in the back of the cop car. You're going home in the back of a DV van. I knew him since he was a baby lizard. Breaks my heart to see him. Those dragons getting mixed up in the wrong crowd. Coffee and a donut? <laughs> Bag of Coke. <laughs> Streets are safe, dragon free episode for the remainder of the show. So much fun yet to come on Gap. You stick around. Still to come, the roundabout GP. But next, an amazing Shaolin monk. How the heck is he doing that? Pretty amazing things in Asia so far. And the Great Wall of China, that was amazing. Oh, that's so amazing. That would have taken so long to build. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Oh, what a temple. That would have taken so long to build. Yeah. <laughs> um, really now, amazing. Now, I don't have the stats on me, but... 
Mount Fuji in Japan. Oh, that was. That would take so long to build Mount Fuji. <laughs> All the digging buckets. Oh, does that match that soil? Okay. Do some snow on the top. Yeah, sure. What time is it? A hundred years. <laughs> we then uh, have seen some things that aren't so impressing. I well, think. this is Andy's definition of being impressed because there was one guy that we saw that I thought he was top shelf. Mm. I was very impressed. There he is, this yeah. guy. Here he is. We saw him on the internet. He's a Kung Fu Shaolin monk who uh, says he could run on water. When I saw that pic, I wasn't that blown away. Well, I'll tell you what will blow you away, though. Look at this. I'm not buying the watch. You wind it up <laughs> once a month, okay, I'm not that. buying the watch. But we did go to China to check out this impressive monk. In Xinjiang, China, there's a Shaolin monk called Shi that can run on water. No, no, he runs on boards laid on water. And that's exactly what you said when we saw this photo on the internet. You also said that you could do it. So we decided to visit Shi and find out. Do I have a little practice? No, I'm going to save it for the main game. Yeah, but just have a warm-up, run across a puddle. <laughs> we did have some trouble finding him. How do you, uh... Everyone must be out at the pool. <laughs> locate the monk. Oh, you just send him a prayer. How long it will take him? Oh, here he is. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's not him. That's not him. <laughs> now, that would have been remarkable. But we did discover, sure, he was sitting outside on a miniature stone picnic table. How long have you been living as a monk here at the, at the temple? Sure, <laughs> when 15 years. 15, 15 years. years. Wow. With, can we talk about flying on water? We've only heard about it. Is it running on very thin planks of wood across the water? Uh, yeah, six like, is it a more important mental achievement or a more important physical achievement? Yeah, so, like, uh, mental is more important because you have to very, like, extremely focus on, like, straight forward and yeah. believe yourself it's going to I've got that covered. It. Not a problem. I've never met yeah, anyone that believes and, himself like, more. Um, mm. Put um, your focus on your, your tiptoes. And he's confident that he can do it. How does the master feel about that? Or, or, Try. Try? Yeah, try. I mean, is it possible, I don't know if monks can do this, but could he grant me like a two-hour monk membership or something so I could be Andy's <laughs> teaching monk? Would I get some free robes? Yeah, right away. Would it help if I channel my monk-like spirit into Andy? He said he, he, it took him 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, what I'm saying is I'll just be a trainee <laughs> monk. He did not want you calling yourself a monk. Well, I was going to be a monk-like coach regardless. Use your mind to make your body lighter. OK. OK? This is a very... This is mental over physical. Pretend I'm one of the planks of wood. Barely felt you. Barely felly? Pretty good. Seriously, how was it? Well, it felt like you ran across me. <laughs> Practical training done. We were off to the lake. As someone that's been a trainee monk now for over 15 minutes, <laughs> I want to share with Unauthorized. you... Unauthorised. <laughs> well, black market trainee monk, granted. I want to share with you hmm. the wonders of spiritual development and of sharpening your mind to the level that I am now achieving. Wow. As a trainee off the books, Spiritual monk, although I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks again for driving, Cher. <laughs> we arrived at the lake to see the boards neatly laid out along the water top, and my monk-like coaching immediately kicked in. <laughs> Close your eyes, touch your nose. Let's see how your awareness is. Touch your fingertips together. Index fingers, pointers. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> Got him. Fourth time lucky. Cool. You ready? <laughs> On one hand, we have a proper monk that has trained for 15 years and has this magical ability as a known factor. On the other hand, we have a man who's very confident and has a friend who recently became an off-the-record trainee monk. Oh, no, sorry, that's... Oh, heavy is better. No, light is better. <laughs> light is better. Sure started his warm-ups. I continued Andy's mind training. Where once the human mind saw a rock, now the monk has made it gone. Training monk, level five. Off the record, unofficial, not allowed to say it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> and the water challenge grew nearer. Should I be doing that? Just do whatever you need to do. Just don't get in his face as a training monk. Off the record, obviously, unofficially, yeah. not allowed to say it publicly. <laughs> but I don't like it when people get in my face when I'm doing breathing stuff. Okay, cool. So do you want to do it here? Yeah, 
Yeah, the same fuck. Then, after nearly 10 whole minutes of build-up, the Andy versus a monk water flying challenge was ready to commence. What a damn I be fast. <laughs> oh my god. Holy moly. This was incredible. He was running on water. And he'd gone the full whack. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> he has monked that out of the park. He's made it the whole way. <laughs> he's gone the full monkey. He's done... Uh, monkey magic. He's, he's, done, he's monkey magic to you. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, this wasn't great for our team. And as sure returned from the water, it was up to me and my off-the-record monk skills to get Andy back in the game. All right, Ando. Using your vibe. Which hand is the rock? Which hand is the leaf? What are you going to be? I'm going to be the leaf. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> they were both leaves. You do what you can to clear. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not even a monk. <laughs> <laughs> My monk senses are going crazy. <laughs> Andy was waiting on the runway. The deal was he had to get half the monk's distance, which was about here. <laughs> no, sorry, it's not funny. It was time. Nice and light. Oh, I'm going for this. You got it. Total belief. Go, Andy Munkin! Oh, my God, was this it? Was Andy really doing it? We couldn't believe it. Was he really flying on water? <laughs> uh, no. No, no, no. Oh, a valiant effort. It wasn't. We mostly just stretched that out with slow-mo. He didn't get anywhere near halfway. And as I could have predicted, Ando wanted another go. Give me another crack. I can get 20. I can get 20. 20 metres. Well, maybe he could, but it was going to take some brilliant monk coaching, and I had just the thing. We need to up the punishment for the body, for the mind to take notice. A little bit how, like, when you're teaching a baby to walk, you make it walk across a pit of snakes or something. <laughs> then they walk. And it required a change in location. Yeah, um, I was a little wary of what Hayne had planned for me. Don't be worried, Ando. Trust your uncle. <laughs> Monk What's uncle. <laughs> monk uncle. Okay. You're my nephew. Well, Man you're not, nephew. You're not my monk uh, but my attempt at redemption is straight after this. Attempted to run on water mm. like a Shaolin monk that we'd met. I still thought I could do this. I just needed a bit more accuracy on the thin ball. Totally, totally. I thought you needed to be more scared of the water to make you run faster and better. <laughs> we'd seen a monk fly on water. It was time to inspire Ando to be better than this. Go, Andy, monk it! Monk it! Oh! <laughs> It's here, doesn't it? Where are we? It's definitely not where they make Chanel or Davidoff. I think it's more of a kind of a fish farm kind of thing. Definitely not sewerage. What's the point of you bringing me here, though? Because your mind needs to overpower your body to not go in that water. Wait, I get really sick. Only if you go in, and your mind is not going to let your body what? go in said the monk smartly, and the Andy not, began to realise the wisdom monk. of the unofficial off-the-record monk. <laughs> Under the table, no need to tell official monks that I'm saying it. I'm not doing it yet until we find out what the hell is in this stuff. It's a fish farm. They also, like, see they built 
the toilets and they also keep their like chicken and goose. Yeah, right. So yeah. there's a lot of chicken and goose and humans. You, you specifically said it wasn't sewage. Mm. I didn't do that. Sort of lost in translation. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> language barrier. Yeah, that's news. It was news. In fact, the monks wouldn't go anywhere near it. They were putting the boards out with a boat. How did this come up in conversation with a monk? I just said, is there anywhere else here that you would never want to go in? <laughs> and then through the translator, she was like, yeah, 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 we know a place. You don't have to do it. I, I won't do it. OK. In, unless I have goggles. So if you have goggles, I'll patch you up. Can we patch up my nose? I will seal up your whole body. Nothing can get in there. But do we need it? Because you're not going in. Precautionary only. So I went about sealing Andy up. Just got a bit of hand sanitizer. OK. For you? Yeah, that's for me. <laughs> okay. Every scratch, every cut, every hole. Eyes, nose, ears, and, you know... These are good. What's the bad for, though? For your, um... For, for your back, for your little back door. Do I need to do that? Up to you. I'm not going to put it on. It's perfect size. We were ready. In your mind, when you make this, does that mean not an impressive feat, really, considering the time of training and stuff? From him? From him. Yeah. OK, 100%. That's the whole reason we've come here. So his dignity versus your health. He doesn't know it because it's hard to explain. Oh, we wouldn't. It's offensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keep that under wraps. 20 metres of boards were set. This was Ando's chance to prove that non-monks could also run on water with the help of an unofficial monk like Tudor. It was time to run on stink water. Three. Two. One. Monk that pond! Oh, it's, it's, he's unmonked, he's unmonked. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Uh, no, Ando was in the sewer water. I ran to get the magic disinfectant called Duty Free Whiskey, and as I was in the middle of saving Andy from certain death, no one had predicted this would happen. Yes, yes, yes! Very nice, very nice! <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, there's whiskey or something in my eyes. Wow, it turns out, kids, that something that's 40% alcohol, whilst an amazing steriliser, can also sting your eyes quite a bit. Anyone got water? <laughs> oh. That's all right. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. You should actually always have a little bit of water with whiskey anyway. <sighs> wow, I can't even remember the run. You didn't make it. Did <laughs> nah, the mug's pretty good. He was good. In fact, he was incredible, and I reckon he thought the same of us. So, you did not make it. No, but what happened after that was so much worse. Another little monk trick. Slime <laughs> <laughs> trick. Look, um, it's up. It's just, just, a, just a rough end to a really, really wonderful day. Oh. So, I wouldn't say it was a wonderful day. I just fell in steak water and got my eyes burnt out from whiskey. <laughs> Lifelong memories, Ando. Yeah. Really great stuff. But didn't have long to dwell on your failure, though, did you? Because we're off to Vietnam mm. for something that could be the most victorious feeling either of us had ever experienced. Yeah, in... I think what we'd say is one of the most epically pointless things we've ever tried to attempt. Well, we've definitely done some epically pointless things. We wanted to do a 250-lap race around one of the most crowded roundabouts in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, not on Vespers, like they all drive, but on one of these babies. Right, here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> pocket size. There's a pocket size bike. Open it. You can get that in your pocket no, if you want. You can't get nah, it. It's not pocket size, but <laughs> it's very small, very small bike. Uh, the other thing it doesn't fit is a human uh, on it very comfortably. <laughs> but we thought we'd give it a go anyway. Two races. Yeah, the bike's tested well, apparently. Got a hundred. $22 of Chinese motorbikes strapped between your legs so you don't take things lightly. 250 laps. So many variables. <laughs> oh, no! He's down. He must produce something special now. Next. If you're looking for a job in Thailand, why not think about opening up a stall at the market? You could sell flowers or fish or even frogs. 
In fact, you can sell things that don't even start with F. The only thing to remember is, quickly pack away all your store when you hear the train coming. Yep, it's that easy. <laughs> Good luck. Welcome back to Gapia Asia. It is time for Hamish versus Andy. Exciting. Oh, wow. Paul, oh, in tonight's Hamish versus Andy, we attempt an endurance mini motorbike race mm. in a location where just even staying alive would be a great first idea without the racing aspect. Uh, the race is pretty simple though, Ham. Uh, head to what's regarded as the busiest roundabout in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, take a mini bike with you, and try to do a maximum amount of laps possible. <sighs> the rules were pretty simple. First rider to 250 laps wins. You are allowed your own pit crew, but you have to source it from the local Vietnamese population. <laughs> we cross now, not live, to the race. <laughs> Welcome to Vietnam, sunny Ho Chi Minh City for today's gruelling 250 lap event, the Roundabout GP. Battling these unique traffic conditions will be Blake and Lee on their incredibly tiny 49cc motorbikes. They really are very small, phenomenally underpowered and hugely uncomfortable to ride. There are their respective mechanics, Fat and Lan. As a couple of last minute bribes are paid, let's go to Ryan Shelton for the rules. The roundabout GP requires competitors to complete 250 laps of a large roundabout on 49cc motorbikes. The first racer to successfully navigate the traffic and complete the 250 laps will win this epic race. Back to you. Well, as you can see, heat will be a huge factor in today's race. Lee with the all-important pole position, as we are now just moments away from lap one of 250. This unique course here in Ho Chi Minh is really just one big left until they hopefully finish here in 250 laps time. Well, here we go. The gantry lights are up. There's the amber. And it's green. Go, go, go. Lee off the mark quickly. He'll be happy with that start. Blake to a clean start as both riders enter this roundabout for the first time. And wow, will you look at how tiny those bikes are. Blake is moving well as both riders will want to negotiate their way to the centre of the roundabout very quickly. Oh, as Lee narrowly misses Blake. Well, that shot gives you a good idea of what they're up against today. 40 degree heat and thousands of obstacles on the track. As Blake comes around to complete his first lap now in a time of 31 seconds. There's our official lap counter for today. I'm sure you can read his name for yourself. Uh, well, it's certainly not John, is it? Back to the action, and Blake's in trouble. I got Lee right on my tail! Go, Blake! Lee makes an exceptional passing manoeuvre down the inside line and takes back the lead. But they've got some company on the track in the form of the local traffic police. Police! The police! Just act normal! It's not just the fuzz bringing the heat, though, today. It's also the sun. Excruciatingly hot conditions, as you can see there from the gallons of sweat pouring down. Oh, and a stellar move from Blake. Let's see that again. Yes, he spots the gap and says, wham, bam, thank you, Vietnam. Gives the beamer a little knee tap on the way through. Just a pleasure to watch. Lap 22 of 250, and still neck and neck as Blake takes another big risk to get the edge. It'll be a tight squeeze, but no. Opportunity for Lee here, and of course, he capitalises. And now it's Lee in the lead again, but it doesn't look like it'll last as Lee leaves his inside exposed and Blake pounces. Well, there has been more Lee changes than... Oh, Lee's down! Lee is down! I didn't see what happened there, but it looks like his left foot slipped for some reason. Yeah, it looks that way. Hopefully he's OK. We can listen in to Lee now. Oh, I did. Just had a crash. Well, apparently he crashed. <laughs> Just had a... Yes! Blake's very happy about it. Ryan Shelton is with Lee now. Yeah, it looks like something's gone wrong with the bike in the crash. I've lost that trivet here as well. I need this. Well, if it is just the foot pedal, Lee should be back out in a few moments. But Blake, meanwhile, builds a handy lead on lap 37. And there you go. Lee back out now. Must have been the foot pedal. And he'll re-enter the race six laps behind. Oh, look out! Still plenty of time for him to claw his way back. And maybe now is that time, as Blake has decided to pit for fuel. 
He'll be relying on his mechanic, Fat, for a quick change over here. Go, Fat! Go! 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 Yeah! Well, while Andy makes up a few of those lost laps, both these riders are battling some serious heat in those leathers and helmets. Ryan, how is Blake handling the warm temperatures? I so warm, I didn't even know what's going on! Oh, look at the wind! Well, no! Uh, uh, well, you made some heat! Wet T-shirt, come Gonna leave you there, Ryan, because Lee has just had another crash. I'm not sure how that happened. I've lost another. I've got to come in. OK, he's coming in. Such a shame, but let's have another look at it. Yeah, a very comparable incident to the first, as Comparicam shows here. Both times he fell to the right. Really not what he needed this early in the race. As he wheels his bike back to his pits, let's see if it is just an engine problem. Just an engine problem, Andy? I think it's an engine problem, yeah. An engine problem, yeah. Both riders on lap 59. Blake keen to re-enter the race with the help of Fat. Well, not great timing from the veteran mechanic, but he has delivered a very efficient pit stop for Blake. Ryan is with Fat now. Yes, Ian, I'm here. You've got to be happy with that. A good two-minute pit stop. What's your secret? Yeah. <laughs> They're the best here in Saigon. Thank you, Ryan, for that incredible insight. That's a record lap. That's incorrect. It isn't, as Lee goes rocketing back onto the track. Wow, like a brisk walk on two wheels, isn't it? He's three laps behind. Blake has held his lead for some time now, as we close in on a remarkable two hours of racing. And Blake racks up a milestone of his own. That's 100 laps. Lee trailing on 97. Ryan trackside. Yes, I'm with him now. That's 100, Hamish. And now we'll see the traditional lap of high five. Well, Blake has really made this tradition his own. Doesn't even mind giving a lap back to Lee as he thanks the fans and lets them high five their hero. High five. Yeah, they just love him here. And it shows. Lee continues to make up ground, only one lap behind on 99, but Blake pitting again. This heat's really getting to him. Usually we can get a good idea of the temperature from the contact with the bike. Let's have a look here. Yeah, well, you can see it's burnt right through the top layer of his arse. Lee cracks 100 as we cross to Ryan, who's with Hamish now. Ryan? I've fused myself to the bike. I'm in a plane. You all right? Yep. You OK? I'm OK. Oh, yeah, just... Great road. I thought we were racing on road. It's late. Clearly, really feeling it. Get him off the road, Ryan. Get off the road. Uh, everything's great, Dad. I'm not your dad, Hamish. We talked about this. Well, as Blake loses precious time and bodily fluids in the pits, we will take a quick break with Lee pushing further ahead after an incredible and inspired comeback like a glistening phoenix riding a green Shetland pony. Don't go anywhere, race fans. We'll be back live with the epic conclusion of this heart-stopping roundabout GP next. <laughs> Uh, where we left things before the break, we were two and a half hours into a 250 lap mini bike endurance challenge, mm. Endo. And it was turning to not so much a battle between us, but a race to see how uh, our bodies and the really dodgy cheap bikes we bought in China would hold up in the 40 degree heat. It still was a race between us, That's though, true. as well. <laughs> Welcome back to Ho Chi Minh. Andy Lee now on lap 120 and has built a sizeable lead over Blake, who remains in the pits, battling extreme heat exhaustion. I've done number ones, twos, threes, fours and fives and sixes all through my body. Doing <laughs> for the kids to say hi to my mum. Well, that from a moment ago has led to this. Blake has requested a massage from his mechanic, Fat. This must be really helping, Amy. Uh, yeah. I just lost a contact lens and this young lady's helping me find it. Well, anything can happen at the roundabout GP, but hopefully Hamish can turn this into the happy ending he's clearly looking for. Back with Andy now, as his confidence must have improved over the last 20 laps or so. We're going back, Fat! Well, you heard it. Here comes Blake. He's got 35 laps to make up as he cuts through this traffic like the Vietnamese equivalent of a Japanese samurai sword. And I understand Ryan has jumped in the sidecar of a passerby. Ryan, can you hear me? You can't hear me. Ryan! Oh, we'll, we'll come back to Ryan shortly. Hamish has made up a couple of laps. Lee hits 150. This race is heating up faster than a bowl of chicken foe with extra chilli. Oh, no. 
I've lost the foothold again. Uh oh, oh, something's happened to Lee's bike. I'm hearing that it could be that foot pedal again. Yeah, I think so. Ryan, are you with Lee so we can find out more? You're joking. Unfortunately, Hamish is in the way. I can't. Unbelievable. Yeah, Ian, I'm trying to get round, but we've got. We expect you to be near the action. I know, Ian, yes, but. There's all this smoke in my well, face. Well, two and a half hours in, and both bikes having issues. Ryan has finally made his way to Lee. Ryan? This is such bad luck for Andy. After coming coming back from so far behind, there's another problem with this foot pedal, Andy. Yeah, I'm not sure whether to go the roller skate. Well, that's true. There are the roller skates there if you do wish to use them. What do you think? I think we should do it. We're gonna go for the roller skates, Ian. The roller skates, back to you. For an explanation of the roller skate, back to you, Ryan. Roller skates are specially designed lace-up boots with four wheels attached to the bottom. Well, I actually wanted an explanation of how the skate was being used here, but, but I think it's pretty obvious now as we hear Hamish's thoughts. Well, it just seems a bit unfair. I'm out here doing it on two wheels. He's using six. Well, it's true, but in that time, Blake has made up 30 laps. Things now neck and neck. It's lap 187 here in Ho Chi Minh City as Lee continues on his roller skate. And Blake has stopped in the middle of the track to help a passerby reload his bags of rice. I wonder you fell over, mate. Less bags next time. But Lee fails to take advantage as he returns to the pit again. Ryan, you'd have to say that Andrew Lee really cannot afford too many more pit stops if he wants to win this race. True? Well, couldn't be truer, Ian. Uh, Andy's here. He's not in a good way. I mean, the roller skate was supposed to help. Do you think it helped? No, it was just sending my leg out left. Bike wanted to go straight. Really done some groin damage. While Lee is in the pit, Blake takes the lead and hits 200 laps in a time of three hours and 48 minutes. And there's that high five. Deservedly so, what a comeback. They love the tradition. As Lee heads back out again, now some 14 laps behind. He'll need some luck to win it from here. And look at him go. He roars back into this race. Wow, he is a man on a mission, a fighter. Nothing can stop him now. Oh, that's a tight squeeze. Oh dear, not ideal. What are you doing, mate? And Blake is letting him know about it. But if I know Lee, and I'd like to think we've become quite close recently, he won't let that half accident dampen his spirits. Blake's still in the lead now, but not by much, completing 2.30 laps. Lee on 2.18. He must produce something special now. What will it be? Oh, no! He's down! Lee's down! What a tragedy! He's lost control somehow. Let's have another look at it. Yeah, you can see there he's attempted to take that turn far too acutely and has paid the ultimate price. He doesn't seem injured, but Ryan is with him now. Ryan? Ian, yeah, look, this doesn't look good. I don't know what the official problem is here. Feeling the pinch. Hamish is getting very close to the 250 now. It will be very hard for you to get back from here. It can happen any moment, mate. Don't look at me cocky. A word of warning from Lee. But Blake appears unconcerned. He knows the race is within his grasp because he's got just 10 laps to go. Things don't look good at the Lee camp. How's the bike? No. No. Well, no doesn't sound promising as Blake powers on. Can Lee continue? But my body's like the bike. I'm out. Oh, no. Tragedy as Lee bows out, collapsing to the ground. He still has to finish, though. That's the rules of racing. That's true. Lee's done his homework. They are generally the rules of racing. But with only one lap to go, Blake will win as he takes the Australian flag. Gosh, he's overcome so much today. Yo, yo, yo! Pain and severe heat exhaustion and stage one of the great comebacks of our time. I love you, Australia! I love you, Vietnam! Looking back and, well, yes, who could forget him zipping up his suits? Great fit. Oh, and his mechanic fat, I remember him. Oh, and when he fell onto his left elbow there. Ryan is on the finishing line now as Blake roars home. Well, as Hamish comes in, for the very final time after 250 laps, Andy, you've got to be proud of him. Yes! Yes! He is. Oh! Wow. <laughs> wow! Well, four hours, 25 minutes and 250 laps later, there it is, Hamish Blake.
your roundabout GP champion. And he is celebrating in style, putting on a show for his fans who have stuck it out till the end. And as the rain comes down and the corks go pop, I'm Ian Dancer. I'll catch you round about. So good, so good on the day. Uh, well done to Haim. Haim, where it? Haim? I'm doing a wheelie, Ando! Oh, great. Ah, yeah. ah, you going to come in for the ceremony? No, no, I'm doing a wheelie! Yeah, just I can see that, but I've just kind of made a cute little podium and stuff, and I got a little, like, a mini wreath. It's which a I thought wheelie. would be nice. Yeah. Ah, good on you, mate. Ah. Oh, OK. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more gap here after this, everyone. Gap year age, uh, Ando. Uh, Ando, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just thought, why not? Let's uh, let's have a crack at the magic sing, yeah? The old K-pop karaoke. Yeah. I'd... What do you reckon? If we've got time, well, you said we we could yeah, if we, we had just, time. If we have time, but we've got one more bit to show. Remember? Yeah, but it comes with the bar, and I've learned all the words, and it's in Korean, but I've memorised it. Like so... I said, if we've if we've got time. Well, what are we? We've, what, what, we've got what that we... other bit that we had in in Vietnam. Uh... A bit in the park, remember? How long is it? Well, it's it's a it's a good length. Uh, I think. Sure, but why don't we? I'll just sing now and no, then. No, we've shown this bit, and if we've got time, you can sing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I do really just do it quickly. Don't even show all of okay, it. Okay, this is us in, in Vietnam, and then we might sing. <laughs> when in Vietnam, we recommend visiting parks, as you never know what you might find. There's so many things to see here. That's the oldest temple in the world. It's not. That's the president. <laughs> it's just an old man. Could be the president one day. That's the great thing about Vietnam. Everyone could grow up to be president. No. That lady's got bees on her. <laughs> I think there's bees in the park. There must be very small Vietnamese bees. Poor thing. No, I think it's an exercise, isn't it? Great exercise. Come out, get some bees on you, get rid of them. But even more impressive than her was this. What is that? They say it's Northern Lion Dance. It's called Northern yeah. Lion Dancing. Yeah, right. So it's a little bit reminds me of the Chinese New Year dragon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do yeah. people ever turn up thinking it's lion dancing, not lion dancing? Lion dancing. Do you know lion yeah. dancing? Yeah. Like a... Oh, is that right? <laughs> is that right? Yeah. I... <laughs> what do you think is better, what you just saw here or lion, lion dancing? Lion yeah, dancing lion. is better. You have to say that, though, don't you? <laughs> Hey, lion. Easy. Oh! Yeah. These guys were brilliant, even without the lion head on. They're going to jump on a ball. That's unbelievable. This is a practical skill that comes in handy if you ever get shrunk down and inserted into a box of jaffas. And just as we were getting ready to leave, I discovered they had another type of costume. So to surprise Ando, I thought his trip could do with another best friend. Come on! Huh? Ando, he followed me. Can we keep him? Andy, meet Bintang, our new giant dog. Can we keep him? Of course we can keep him. All we've got to pay for is shoes and two adult meals per meal time oh, a day. Oh, thank you, thank you. Last day with your best friend on the trip. Uh, a beautiful end to tonight's episode. Oh, was thank it, you Andy? for Was it? Or would this be a beautiful end to tonight's episode? Well, Hearing a lot of requests from the crowd, a lot of people saying, let's hear a karaoke song. Haven't heard a single one. OK, okay. well, you're distracted by the silly dog thing. OK. Um, this is a karaoke. <laughs> Want to hear k Seriously, don't have... Much time. Oh, this will be very quick. Just oh, the, we'll have to wrap it up if we go. Just the length of one Korean song. Sure. Okay, it's in Korean, so but just let the music wash over you. The song is called Wrong Boy Marriage. <laughs> Here we go. Again, I am sorry, we do have to wrap it up. Uh, thanks very much for being with us, everybody. Next time on Gap Year Asia. We welcome back an old friend. What? Ultimate wingman. Will Andy finally find a wife in Tokyo? Oh, Cinder! Oh, Andy, you lucky 
Okie dokie. This is such a great way to meet women if you can organise this. See you soon, guys. Guys, you've got nothing else to do. Come on, keep watching. Go, go, go. We don't appear needy, but please subscribe. Hey, Ando, you know who subscribed recently? Mm. That big Japanese YouTube star. Oh. That everyone likes. Yeah, great. But she's on. Yeah. You get on. Subscribe.